Okay, and uh, now let's start working on controlled inputs. And essentially, when you hear controlled inputs, just think that there's going to be a state value. Now, it can be one value, which represents all of the inputs, something we're going to cover a little bit later, or it can be a case where each input is going to have a state value that is associated with that input. And as you're changing the value in the input, you're automatically also changing the value in the state. And then in turn, the input shows the state value. And if this is somewhat confusing, just think of it this way. Basically, whatever we're going to be typing, this is going to be added to the state value. And then whenever you're ready to submit the form, you can just grab that state value and do whatever you need to do, whether that is to post some data on a server or to set up some kind of functionality. And hopefully you see where I'm going with this. So if this sounds a little bit confusing, again, just bear with me. Basically, like I said, we want to start by setting up state values. And in this case, we'll do a state value for each input. Later, yes, we'll combine all of them in one. So for that, we just need to go with use state. And since I have name and email, it kind of makes sense if I name my state values the same, correct? So I'm going to go here with name and then set name. And that is going to be equal to use and state. That's what we want to set it up over here. And we'll start with an empty string because this is what we have in the input. And then we want to change it around where this is not going to be name. It will be email. And then we're looking for set and email. So this is our initial setup. And then we want to set up a function that is actually going to be invoked every time the user is going to type something in the input. And remember, in the React Fundamentals, we covered that the event that we want to add to the input is on change. So as the user is going to be typing something in the input, we will invoke the callback function, which of course we need to set up first. So let's go here and let's say const and then handle handle change. That's going to be my function. And remember that we right away have access to the event object here. And for now, let's just leave it blank. And then when it comes to input, if we want to set up controlled input, on each input, we need to add two things, we need to add a value. And this needs to be basically equal to that state value. So I'm going to go over here with name. And second one, is that on change. And yes, both of them need to be there. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So in here, I'm going to go with on change. And then I want to pass in the callback function, correct? So I'll go with handle change and save it. Now the last thing that we want to do is to set up the functionality. And if you remember in react fundamentals, I said that we have access to the event object. And from there, we can get tons of cool things. The two most important ones, I guess the ones that we're going to use the most in the course are event.target.name and event.target.value. Now, for now, we don't have the name and I'll showcase that basically we'll get an empty string, but we'll definitely get the value. So let's go over here. Let's say log and we want to go with event.target.name copy and paste. And we also want to set up the value. And for this, I'll actually move to the bigger browser window because I do definitely want to showcase the state. So this is going to be the form on a bigger browser window. And if we inspect the components, we right away see the controlled inputs. Okay, awesome. Notice our two state values. So they do exist. And then as I'm going to be typing, I'm going to get two things. First one is going to be empty because there is no name set on the input. However, second one is going to represent whatever the user has typed. Now notice something interesting, though, we're not persisting this value in input. So this will always stay empty string. Why? Well, take a look, because our state value is an empty string. So when we're setting up controlled inputs, that's why we need all of those things, we need a state value, we need both of those attributes on the input, we need the value as well as the on change. And in the callback function, this is where we'll update the state value. How we can do that? Well, we can use set name. 
correct? And again, keep in mind, this is going to be empty if there is no name attribute. And later we'll set up the name attribute and we'll use it. But I definitely want to showcase that if there is no name attribute, then I mean, it's just going to be empty. So I'll leave these ones for your reference. And here's what I want to do. I want to go with set name, and then I want to grab whatever I have in the value. So let's invoke that and let's say event dot target dot value. And now the interesting thing is going to happen. So we have the state value, we have the on change and as the user is typing, we'll be setting the state value equal to whatever is in the input. And then in turn, we'll use that value here to display it in the form. So check it out here. And I think again, I'm going to use the bigger browser window just so you can see that we're definitely updating that state value. Now check it out. Essentially, whatever I have in a form gets here as a state value. And that's why I can see that in a form as well. So hopefully this makes sense. Okay, so that should do it for the first controlled input. But what about the second one? What about the email? Because as you can see at this point, we're just updating the name. So if I'll add this handle change to the email, I mean, it's not going to work. Even though I can add the email as a value to the input. I mean, in here I have set name, not set email. So what are our options? Well, we can set up another function. So let's say we can rename this so it's not generic. I can say handle name change. And then for the email, of course, I'm going to go with handle email change or we can use the arrow function. And effectively, this is totally up to you. If you have more logic, then of course it makes sense that you set it up here as a separate function. However, if you're just passing event.target.value, then we also have this option where instead of the handle change, which by the way, you can always find it in the readme, and therefore, just so it's cleaner, I'm going to remove what we can do here is set up our arrow function. Remember, we do need to grab the event. So that doesn't change. And then invoke set name directly here. So I can go here with email dot target dot value. And you guessed it correct. For all the inputs, we basically need to repeat these two steps. We need to set up the value. I mean, considering that you already have the state value. We need to set up the value and we need to set up the on change. And then in the on change, we just go with set and then whatever is the name of the input. So let's go over here. Let's keep on moving. This is going to be my input. I want to copy and paste again. These are different values. So it's not going to be name. It's going to be email. And the function is also going to be email. Let's save that. And again, let's navigate to the big browser window. And if I'll type over here, let's say some kind of dummy email, doesn't look like it works here. Maybe it just needs a little nudge. Let me try right now, John. And as you can see, now everything works. So now both of them are controlled inputs. And essentially our workflow is going to be, we'll set up value and on change, and then we'll set up the on submit as well. So let's navigate where we have the state values. And let's just add a on submit on the form. And let's create a handle submit. So I just need to create that function. Handle submit and hopefully you remember from the fundamentals that again, we have access to the event object. And in here, the first thing we want to do is prevent the default behavior. So we invoke prevent default, and then we can do something again. At the moment, we're not going to do anything in this video, but technically this is where you post to the server, where you do something with the value. So I'll say do something. And essentially, we just want to access both of the values. So in my case, I'm just going to log it. So I'm going to say name and email. And once I save, notice how I can nicely type. John and then John at Gmail. And once I click on submit and check the console, notice I have both of the values. I have the John as well as the email. So essentially that's how we can set up 
controlled inputs in React.